This is the Value Investor Podcast with Tracy Reinick. All things value, all the time. Welcome back, value investors. When do you sell a stock? This is the most difficult decision in investing, especially for those of us who are long-term investors, which many of us value investors tend to be. Warren Buffett himself has famously said, our favorite holding period is forever. And a lot of people took that to mean that he never sells. But even Buffett has sold most of his stocks over the years. He recently sold out of Wells Fargo that he's owned for for like two decades. He exited JP Morgan recently. He sold all of his IBM last decade, taking a loss even on those. And he's been selling out of AbbVie in the current portfolio recently. So even just looking every quarter, you see him doing things and selling. Now, we don't know if it's him, one of the lieutenants or who it is, but we do know the IBM sale was definitely him. So we do know he's been selling. When asked how he decides to sell, Buffett always gives various reasons. One of the first reasons he always has given is that he wanted to deploy the money into something else. So he didn't have the cash that he has now in the Berkshire portfolio, but he wanted to buy into something new or make an acquisition and he needed to raise that cash. So he sold positions to do that. Also, he's talked about how, as a second reason, the company isn't really doing what he thought when he bought it. So that would be the reason he gave for IBM. He said he had a plan for it. The management did not live up to that plan, even though he gave him a couple of years. So he was selling and get out. He also sold all of his airline stocks, mostly for a loss when the pandemic hit, because that was going to be one of the most impacted industries by the coronavirus. And he wasn't going to wait around. He just decided to get out because earnings were going to be challenged. He took a lot of criticism for getting out so quickly after the pandemic hit and on those lows, because remember the travel stocks, especially the airlines and like the cruise ships were some of the biggest hit initially because everyone knew that their business was going to suffer greatly on those lockdowns. Airline stocks have since rallied, but have also sold off again since their their March 2020 lows. Buffett decided that owning a business so impacted by COVID outbreaks wasn't one he wanted to be in. I mean, think of all the factors we still are debating with the airlines or even the cruise stocks. The airlines uh, have been up and down. I took a look at Southwest, ticker LUV. Many of you are in it. From March 23rd, 2020, which was like the low of the pandemic sell-off, to June 29th, it's up 13%. The S&P is up 65% off those coronavirus lows. So is Buffett looking as as dumb as many said he was when he sold out? He did take a loss, but the stocks haven't really gone anywhere in the meantime. His largest holding, Apple, is up 143% off those coronavirus lows. So he's been fine holding on to that one, right? Um, no, No problem there. But what do all these moves really have in common in the Berkshire portfolio? Well, Warren Buffett appears to have a plan. This is key to knowing when to sell. Some investors will sell on a 20% drawdown or maybe even 30 or if there's a 50% drawdown, whatever it is, they will set in a limit and decide to get out or they will sell when something about the company changes. Or perhaps you've met your investing goals. As Buffett said, he needed the money for something else. So it's met his goals. He's going to rotate it into something else that he thinks has more upside and he's done with it. And this uh, kind of plan, having one, is key, especially for a long-term investor. Now let's look at some examples. So maybe you owned Frontier Airlines instead of Southwest. It's actually ticker ULCC. Frontier Group Holdings. And you bought it because you loved Frontier. Maybe you fly it all the time and you or you know someone who works there and they love it. So you're like, I'm going to buy some of this airline. 
But now they're attempting to buy Spirit, ticker S-A-V-E. And maybe you don't like Spirit. And so now they're going to be a combined company with Frontier and Spirit if that deal goes through. Remember, JetBlue is also trying to buy Spirit. Someone's going to get Spirit, it looks like. But you have to ask yourself, should you continue to own Frontier now that it will be a very different company than the one you bought? I've been having this debate a lot about one of my stock holdings recently. I own Meta Platforms, ticker Meta, M-E-T-A. This is in my own personal portfolio. I've talked about it in the past. I started buying nine years ago, about a year after the IPO. I dollar cost averaged and my basis is about $90. Year to date, those shares of Meta are now down 51%. They're trading around $162. So remember, my basis is 90. It's now down to 162. Is the bad news mostly priced in? Some are saying, oh, yeah, it's already down 50%. This is the worst it's going to get. But I didn't have a price target on Meta because I'm just a long-term holder in it. But it's also been volatile over the years. If I sold on any 20% or even 30% pullback, I would have been out of the stock a long time ago. So for some of my long-term holdings, I don't put a limit on when I get out. Um, But what about the company itself? I originally bought Facebook, as it was known then, to own Instagram, not to own Facebook, actually. (laughs) I was never a fan of Facebook. Yes, I'm on it. I know many of us are. Some have gotten off of it, as we know. Um, But I loved Instagram and what they were doing with that product. And it has grown that platform to over a billion users in the time that I have owned it. So it's lived up to its expectations that I was looking for in the company. But now the company has changed its name over to Meta. And it's spending billions on the metaverse and is going in a completely new direction. So much so that uh, Sheryl Sandberg is now leaving the company and she was one of their top executives. Is this the same company I bought nine years ago? Do I want to own the metaverse? These are the questions I have to ask and you have to ask yourself about all your investments, right? Because things change over the years. So when you start to ask yourself these questions, it kind of becomes clearer about what you must do. Uh, Meta, I feel, is kind of an easy example because they are going in a completely new direction with the metaverse. They did the name change. They're spending all this money. It seems pretty obvious if you don't want to own the metaverse, you don't own this stock. But what about other companies like NVIDIA, ticker NVDA? NVIDIA is down 47% year to date. Many of you have NVIDIA as a key holding in your portfolio. Over the last 20 years, shares are up over 10,000%. Now that's off its highs at its highs at the end of 2021. It was up 22,000% over the last 20 years. But now it's up just 10,674%. But this highlights how you should really have a plan. But maybe you do nothing. Maybe you you aren't selling that. I have a friend on Twitter who has told me about his investment in Visa over the years. So he bought Visa, ticker V, in 2008 at the IPO. It is one of the ones that I kick myself for not buying because I did think, oh, Visa, it's finally going IPO. I do want to own that. But then I just never bought it. I still don't own it to this day. But he did not do what I did. and He bought some then. So the shares are up 1,100% since the IPO versus the S&P 500 up just 192%. But a couple of years ago, it was looking a little bit bubblicious. Shares were trading around 50 times earnings. It kept going up and hitting new highs. Yes, it was growing those earnings, but not at the rate to justify the 50 times. This friend on Twitter got a little bit nervous and decided, you know what? I'm going to sell a portion of my shares. I'm going to lock in some of these gains. No, Nothing wrong with that. And he sold 30% when it was looking a little bubbly. And basically, he hasn't looked back. He still owns some shares, but he did lock in the gains. This is allowing him to sleep well at night while he waits to see what Visa does in the future. Now, Visa shares are down 
uh, 14% over the last year, but down just 8% year to date. So not selling off as badly as some of the tech giants are. Also remember, like my friend on Twitter, you don't have to suddenly sell all of your shares. He didn't. He only sold like 30%. Buffett himself usually sells in parts. Obviously, he's a big shareholder and you don't want to just dump your shares on the, on the market. And so that's why he does it. But there's nothing wrong with any of us following that and selling in various chunks, even every month, if that's what makes you feel better. Now let's talk about the taxes. I've talked with many of you about how you get paralyzed selling your stocks in taxable accounts. And that's because there's the capital gains tax. So this is not sales in an IRA, for instance, that these are in the taxable accounts. Yes, paying the capital gains tax does stink. I'm with you. I, I, I'm right up there. I get it. But you can't make all of your selling decisions based just on that, that tax. If you have a stock that's underwater, maybe you can offset some of that, those losses with your gains on another stock. There are ways to limit the damage of the capital gains tax. But really, it just means you did something right, you have gains in the stock, and yes, they're going to tax you on it. Uh, but Again, you did something right and you have the gains. So that's what I want. That's the name of the game. So I have not hesitated to sell out in my own personal portfolio that is taxable when it met my plan, my plan. So I was a long-term shareholder in Williams and Sonoma, ticker SWM. I've owned it, I don't know, five or six years. And I really like furniture companies, as many of you know. I really like what they were doing at Williamson Sonoma and its flagship brand, West Elm. It's the top furniture brand in the country. But I sold all of my shares earlier this year after doubling my investment during the pandemic. I still love the company, but I decided, according to my plan, to lock in those gains and move to the sidelines. I may get back in at a later date at a cheaper price. Um, I still watch the stock and we'll see what happens. But that stock was in a taxable account that I own as well, but I had a plan and I stuck to it. Yes, I'll have to pay the taxes on it, but um, it, it did what I wanted it to do. I've also been asked many times about my investment in RH, ticker RH. Do I still own it? A lot of people ask me this. Do you still own it, Tracy? Are you still in it? Uh, because it's been a wild ride. It soared on the start of the pandemic, but over the last two years, um, it has done a round tripper. So shares were up about 175% over the last two years, but are now down 7% during that time. S&P 500 is up 26.6%. So I would have done better off over the last two years just being in the S&P 500. But I've owned shares since 2016. I did sell some when the pandemic hit in March 2020 to lock in some profit and to free up some cash. That was kind of like the Buffett uh, maneuver, his uh, idea to sell because you want to buy something else. So I, locked, I sold some then in March 2020. But I haven't sold any since. I also haven't bought any since. I don't think of selling my remaining shares because the business is performing how I intended it to. It's still selling the luxury furniture. It's about to open a new gallery in Europe. The first one, it is open there and it's launched another new line in its contemporary collection. Unlike Meta Platforms, which is now becoming a different company than the one I originally bought, RH is not. So this is my plan and I still love the company. And if shares continue to decline a bit, I may be adding to this position finally. They have a $2 billion share buyback plan, which it looks like they're not really deploying yet. So they too are waiting for the shares to get cheaper, which it looks like they may. And then they too may be getting in. So um, I'm just keeping it in my portfolio and watching that one because that's a part of my plan. So in conclusion, there is no green light that goes off and says, you know, sell now. I wish that there was. That would be easy, right? We all know how difficult it is to sell. 
But even Warren Buffett doesn't have that green light. And he sometimes gets it wrong, uh, or actually many times he does. He, he doesn't sell at the top either. So nobody can ever really get it right all the time. That's why you have to have a plan, whatever it is, and then execute it and never look back. That's the key. I've never lamented selling a stock afterwards. I've always just redeployed the money into some new stock position, or I'm using that cash for some other kind of goal, which was part of the plan, you know, to pay for college, to buy a new car, to pay for a big uh, once in a lifetime vacation, for a home remodel or a home down payment, whatever my plan was, my goal. If I met that goal and I sold and I've now deployed the money into either new investments or that goal, well, that's a positive, right? That is uh, achieving the goal and that is good, right? So even if I took a loss, I usually feel good to get out of a losing stock. And, you know, I usually do move that money into something new. It's strange, right? You obsess over the losing stock for quite some period of time, especially us long-term value investors. We might be like, oh, you know, it's down 20%. Oh, it shouldn't be. Oh, it's down 30. Maybe I should buy more. But if something has changed with the company and you no longer are on the same course with that stock investment, then it usually does feel pretty good to get out and just redeploy, then you're not obsessing over that kind of negative story in your stock portfolio anymore. And we all have losses. Even Warren Buffett, like he did with the airline stocks when the pandemic hit, he took a couple billion dollar loss there. Um, but I, I doubt he's obsessing over any of that uh, here two years later as you know he's now redeploying his cash into more productive things that have record free cash flow like the energy stocks. So have a plan, stick with it and never look back. Okay. I hope this helps you. It helped me just talking about a couple of these things. Um, I know what I have to do now, right? Um, so let me recap some of the stocks we talked about. We talked about Southwest. It was LUV. Frontier is ULCC. Spirit is S-A-V-E. Meta Platforms is Meta, M-E-T-A. NVIDIA is N-V-D-A. Williams & Sonoma, W-S-M. R-H, which does not go by Restoration Hardware anymore. So don't call it Restoration Hardware. It's just R-H. R-H is just R-H. And then I mentioned Visa, which is just ticker V as in Victor. So as always, you want to be sure to subscribe to get all of our podcasts. I'm trying to cover these topics that matter to all of you value investors. It is a great time to be a value investor. There's plenty of value out there. And I feel like we've entered into a new golden era for value investors. Doesn't mean it's not going to be rocky over that period. There's always going to be ups and downs. So you want to get the podcast to find out what's going on and where the cheap stocks are. And also what Warren Buffett is doing with his portfolio as we cover that a lot on this podcast. So be sure to get us somewhere. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify. We're on Amazon Music. Music. We're also on SoundCloud with the Zach's Market Edge, but be sure to get it somewhere. And I'll see you again next week with some more value stocks. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.